Welcome to Gamer Ability. I'm your host, Six Penny, and today I'm going to provide a beginner's guide and with tips and tricks for Mario Golf Super Rush. So if you don't know me, you're new to the channel, I create a lot of tutorials for virtual golf games and really any sports game and a lot of other games that come out as well because I love learning the mechanics and helping other gamers improve, especially when they've never played the sport or game before. So if you get some enjoyment and some help out of this video, drop a like before you go and subscribe to the channel. I would greatly appreciate it. It's likely by the time you're watching this video that I have other tutorials up for this game. I'm going to be doing advanced tutorials, tutorials on specific aspects of the game such as spin, shot shaping, draw and fade, and other advanced stuff. But today is going to be a general overview of the different areas to improve your game. Now I'm going to review spin, I'm going to review a broad overview of shot shaping, how to plan your shot and everything like that. So the main thing first thing you want to look at is of course planning your shot so to do this you're going to hit y i mean x on the nintendo switch controller x is going to bring up this overview here that trying that white triangle is showing where your ball is going to land if you hit a full shot so you can change clubs from this view down and up on the left stick and so if I hit the driver here, it's going to fly 223. The other thing you can see from this map are the different course hazards or elements. Do you see those, uh, the little rocks, boulders walking around there? Uh, th those things, if you hit them, they're actually going to smack your ball and move your ball. They're, they're going to push it into the rough or off the fairway. Uh, bad things are going to happen. And you also have those tornadoes that when you hit, it's going to flip your ball up in the air. You can use them in speed golf to get like a boost uh, to fly up to kind of jump in the air. But in general, you want to avoid those hazards at all costs, right? Uh, there's lightning on the weather course. There's water. Obviously, you never want to hit it in the water in golf. They're over here to the left. You see those clouds by the bridges in the middle. It's going to show them pushing air right there. So it's going to actually blow your ball off that area. So you want to try to avoid those as well. So this is how you plan your shots. You want to plan it to where you're going to hit and not hit those hazards. The other thing to plan your shot is the range finder. To use this, you're going to hit right trigger or the right button. And then you actually aim with your controller. It's actually really cool. So you actually use your controller. It's just like you're looking through your binoculars. So pick an area. So say, let's see how far away these stone rollers are. There's probably a better name for those. Uh, so they're about 250. So I need to know. I know I need to not hit 250 that way. But what when they come back this way? How far are they? So they're getting close, like two, probably 220 or something. Uh, you can also, when you do that, it shows that landing spot right there. That's what that red line with the square in it is. You can see the shape. So when your ball hits. It, the line's moving to the left and red is showing that it's really going to kick the ball to the left and you have a chance to hit the bunker. So that's the shot planning. So there's a few things that you need to take into account regarding distance. So I know I'm showing you off the tee, but you're going to do this every single shot. So the first thing is elevation. So do you see the flag at the top of the screen and that little blue arrow pointing up? That's showing that there's a little bit of elevation. So that means the hole is above the above your golfer. That just means in general, it a little bit is going to be taken off the shots. So you need to hit it just a little bit harder. Now you can get better a look at the elevation with this. So as I can see, my landing spot is basically a little bit downhill. So 0.2 yards, it says there, minus 0.3. You can see it at the bottom or to the right. Now the flag is actually 4.9 yards uphill. So that would mean it would take about five yards, around five yards off the shot. So I need to hit the shot a little bit harder. So you need to take that account in every single shot, whether it's a drive, whether you're hitting to the green. In general, add more when it's uphill. When it's downhill, hit a little bit less. So either hit a less club or just aim less with your power mark. The other thing that's going to affect your distance is the wind. The wind is shown on the top left of the screen there. Uh, you have hole one, par four, the distance of the hole, and then you have the wind. It's going to show you the arrow, which is the direction that the wind is blowing, and the miles per hour. In this case, we have a wind that's actually blowing into our face and to the left. That means the into our face part is going to 
decrease the distance that our cub is going to fly. So instead of flying 223, it's going to fly about 7 to 10 yards left. Um, it's about 1 to 1.25 on, on these winds. You don't have to look too far into it. Just know it's going to take a little bit off and you need to hit it about that many yards further. So 7 yards, 10 yards. Just you need to add a little bit more to the shock. You'll get better with time, and I'll probably be doing a specific wind video. I always like to do specific mechanics and show how the wind is actually affecting every shot. Uh, now, the direction means I'm going to, if the wind's blowing to the left, I need to aim to the right to compensate. So I would compensate to the right. If it's the opposite way, I need to aim to the left. If this wind was blowing the other direction, so if it was blowing to the top of the screen, that means it's going to add distance to my shot. So I would, if to hit 223, I would have to take off distance. So maybe like 210 to fly about 217 and roll up to the 223, 230 area. So that's how the, the wind affects it. That's how the elevation affects it. So once you map out, okay, we want to hit it 210 here. We don't want to run into that. We don't want to run into those walking things. So let's just play it safe and hit about 210 just so we hit the fairway. Next, you want to look at the power bar. So on the right of the screen, you have your power bar. What's important to pay attention to is that top area. Do you see that red area, the red triangular area? That is the shift zone or danger zone. So that's when you start to get in randomness in the game or what po most people call RNG, RNG factors. So when you hit into that red triangular area, your ball may go perfect or it may randomly push to the left or so it could pull to the left or go to the right so to avoid that you want to hit in the safe zone the safe zone is basically anywhere on that power bar that does not have red on it it's going to go shorter but you don't risk any rng it's going to go where you want it as long as you hit the right button inputs at the right time so it's a risk reward do you want more power off i will say off the tee my recommendation is to uh, go especially on par fives and long par fours go for the max distance now on shorter holes uh, such as this one this is a more shorter hole i don't need max distance so i could probably hit the safe area if i wanted to and i really want to hit the safe area anyways because i don't want those rocks to hit my ball into the rough uh, so i would actually go for that safe area you don't know the exact distance but you do know it's going to go less than 223 yards uh so, I mean, that's, you basically judge that it would probably fly like 210, somewhere around there. The wind would take off about 7, 203, and it would probably fly more than that. Um, now, you, you may be wondering, when you hit the button first, it goes up, you hit the first time to set the power, but then that first button press is very important, because that first button press is going to dictate your spin. So you can actually put spin on the ball, by setting your power button with either A, with either double tapping A successively really quick to put top spin on your ball, or by t hitting B, which automatically puts normal backspin on it, or you can double tap B to put super backspin on it. And I'll show that later on in the video. So you, the super backspin is very useful if you just want the ball to stick. If you want it to stick on the green, you want it to stick in the fairway, it's very useful and it's so much fun to use, especially on approach shots. I use it all the time on approach shots. So that's how you put spin on the ball. Now, the button press after that, so you'll notice you're gonna hit A, hit A again, and then it's gonna go back to the top. That second area in between before it gets from the bottom to your power point, you're gonna add shot shaping if you want to. The shot shaping you can do, you can add, you can hit it more in the air, which I consider lofting the ball, by flicking your left stick up. Multiple, t The more you flick it up before it gets to the top, the better it's going to be. The second one, I mean, the other thing you can do is de-loft it or punch it, hit it lower. You can do that to hit it under the wind, hit it under obstacles. Uh, so you do the opposite, you, you flick it down as you're as in that second part of the swing. You can also put what's called draw or fade on the shot. So either hitting the ball to the left. Um, so we will actually draw and fade this shot so you can see it. So I will be drawing the ball, which means the ball will be moving from right to left. 
So it starts straight and it'll move to the left towards the end. In order to do that, I'm just gonna move my stick to the left. So let's show spin and draw on this shot. So I'm gonna do full backspin, which means I'm gonna double tap B. So I'm gonna A, double tap B, move left, and see those two arrows next to 111? That means the ball is gonna move to the left. So that's a draw. That's the shot shaping. All that flicking in the stick, so I drew it too much. <laughs> I was just trying to put a little bit of draw on there, but this happens. But this is a good example, so I, I get to talk about two other elements of the game. So this is lie and lie angle. So look at Rosaline's feet. And let's just appreciate Rosalina's. Uh, I love her swing animation. She uses her wand to swing the club. I mean, how cool is that? But anyways, you can see that the ball is sitting above Rosaline's feet. So that is an uphill, what's called an uphill lie. The game shows you this on the right side of the screen there. Do you see how it's slanted? So it's showing that the ball is gonna go straight and then go way to the left. So you're gonna use that to know that, okay, I need to aim to the right to compensate. You're also in the bunker. So the bunker, I, I will say, the rough and bunker in this game do not really affect distance very much. The bunker affects distance by just a few yards. The rough does not affect distance at all. So the rough only changes the danger zone. Do you see that shift zone, the red zone in the bunker? It's really big. In the rough, it's even bigger than that. Um, now, if we change clubs here in this bunker, you see how the danger zone is going to get bigger? Sand wedge, it's smaller. That's what you would expect. But if you're in the rough, you don't have to account for distance. You're just going to account for the lie angle and probably add some backspin on it because it's going to roll more from the rough. Now, in this case, I know that this hole is about 100 and it says... We could get our rangefinder if we want, but it's somewhere around 130 yards. So our rangefinder to the flag, we'll hit right trigger to scan. So if, if we hit right trigger, once we're aiming at that red circle, it's gonna take us to the flag. So it's 131 yards, uphill seven yards. So basically I wanna hit this 131. Now, this club would carry 137 into a seven miles per hour headwind. So that seven miles per hour headwind is gonna take off seven yards anyways. So it's basically a one-to-one -one cross headwind. Even headwind is really about one-to-one. -one. Maybe 1.5 1, 1 is what you could use. I will calculate the specifics, but from what I found so far, it's one to, around one-to-one, -one, maybe 1.25. Uh, but one-to-ones, you'll be close. So this is going to fly about 130. If that's going to fly 130 with a full shot, look at that danger zone. Do you see what's going to happen? It's gonna go randomly to the left or to the right. So to counteract that, I'm gonna go up a club. So this would fly 149, and this game does a good job of showing you when the green starts on the power bar and where the flag is. So you know where you need to swing, basically. We know that in general, due to the wind, this club is gonna fly 142, because of what I just said, it's gonna take off seven yards, so that's 142. The It's elevated, see how it's uphill? So I need to add, it's gonna, I need to, it's gonna fly less than that. So instead of 142, it's gonna fly like probably it, it anywhere from like five to 10 yards. I mean, we don't know an exact. So if, if this exact, we saw seven, so it's gonna fly seven yards short. So instead of 142, we're looking at 135 and then the bunker is gonna take off a few yards. So really ideally this should fly about 130 if we hit a full shot. So let's do that. So if we're aiming right, I'm going to aim about 10 yards to the right because of that. Look how big this lie angle is. And then we're going to hit a full shot and send it at the hole. So again, let us let let me show you a top spin now. So at the top, I'm going to double tap A. So right there, top spin, you can see it says it at the top. And look at that RNG. So the RNG went to the right. And the topspin actually helped. So that actually was perfect. It flew 99 yards, rode up 36. But that random error really kicked our ball to the right. And you can really see how that elevation affected the ball, couldn't you? So now we're on the green. So on the green, if you've never played a golf game, the lines are going to move and show you which way the putt is breaking. 
So in this case, the, all the lines are moving to the left. You'll see different colors. Red means it's breaking a little bit more. Blue means it's breaking a little bit less. Now, as we look at this, we have, you see there's also lines moving towards us. Those lines moving towards us is showing that it's uphill. So we're actually hitting into a hill. If they were moving the other way, it would be downhill, which means we would need to hit the putt. If it's downhill, you need to hit it a little bit softer, so a little bit before the pin shows up on the power gauge. If it's uphill, you need to add more to the shot. If, it's, if there's more lines and they're moving pretty quick, you need to aim pretty far past the pin. If you're in the rain, so the weather courses, when rain comes into play and it's uphill, you have to crush the ball. We're talking like 15 more feet than you normally would, 15 to 20 feet harder than you normally would. Uh, so be, pay attention, the rain really affects the distance. It affects the rollout of the clubs when it hits the green and it affects your putting. Even on downhill putts in the rain, you have to hit the ball further than what the pin says. I know we're, it's not raining right now, but I'll be doing more specific videos in the future on that aspect of the game. So as we take a look here, you can change your shot type when putting. So it's going to default to the putt like this is a short putt. Uh, X, I mean, that's Y. I get confused on the controllers. I'm used to Xbox. So that would be a medium putt and then a long putt. Uh, this, all we need is a short putt. So in this game, you see nothing that really breaks more than like a full grid line so a medium full grid line so we take a look at this if that's half a grid like you're never gonna get i have not yet had a putt break this much besides that bowser's course so that last course in the game that's different but in general you you'll you'll learn the more you play but if the lines are moving to the left i need to aim to the right i'm gonna go about half a grid line i'm telling you these greens do not break as much as you would expect because they're, they're actually, the lines aren't moving too fast in most putts in general. So then I need to hit it a little bit harder since it's uphill. So I'm going to aim about five squares. You see the power bar, there's like dark and gray squares. So I'm going to aim about five squares farther. So I went a little hard, but we'll see if it still pays off. Oh, we just missed it because we hit it too hard. So when, it, when a putt is uphill it's actually going to break less than a downhill putt. So keep that in mind. Downhill putts are always going to break more. Now, on uphill or downhill putts, if you hit it too hard, the putt's going to break less. There was an example of where I actually overpowered the putt and it took the break out of it. It would have went in with normal. So on these short putts, just hit them past the hole and you're going to be in there. Just don't hit them short. Trust me, it'll make you so sad. It happens to all of us. So that was basically an overview of the different mechanics in the game. I talked about wind. I talked about elevation. I talked about um, spin, how to put spin on the ball, how to put draw and fade, uh, how to use the range finder, how to really every part. The only thing I didn't talk about is the rollout of clubs. So... In golf, if you never played golf before, most people that play golf know this, but the ball is going to hit the ground on the green, but then it's going to roll. It's going to roll. So, which means you want to land it shorter. You want to land it short of the hole always. So, uh, that's one thing I didn't talk about. So, pay attention. So, the higher club you hit, or what, what, what we would consider the lower club, so the three driver, three wood, five wood, hybrids those are going to roll more than your irons so the six iron seven iron eight iron nine iron and your pitching wedge approach wedge and sand wedge are actually going to roll the least amount and you can actually get backspin to spin the ball backwards so the higher you go up the le the more row you're going to have when the ball hits the green the further you go down the less row you're going to have when your ball hits the green or or the fairway whatever surface you're hitting all right so in this beginner guides and tips and tricks the first one of the series you've learned really every most mechanics in the game i'm going to do a deeper dive of each mechanic in the future so stay tuned for those on the channel you've learned really everything how elevation affects the ball how wind affects the ball how how to putt how how to aim your putt uh, really 
every aspect you really need to improve at the game. Now, I know I didn't talk specifics on numbers on how much elevation changes affect. I did a little bit and how much the wind affects the ball when it's across, depending on what direction it is. Uh, but that's going to come with time and I'll do more specific videos on that if you need help with that. So stay tuned for those. Thank you for watching this video to the end. If you found some enjoyment out of it, drop a like before you go and subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more Mario Golf Super Rush content and gaming content. I will see you in the next video. As always, have a fantastic day, gamers.